Social justice warriors can be a real problem in society if we ignore their tactics. If you're not careful, social justice warriors will have you fighting for the rights of murderers and armed robbers. They seem to raise their heads a lot when it is time to defend crooks, criminals, or people whose lives and behaviors disregard the laws of the land. The law stipulates what is legal and illegal. If something is illegal, then why should it matter that you were hungry when you did it? The habit of justifying crimes based on, but the criminal was poor and that is why they committed the crime, seems loving, but it is actually destroying the social and moral fiber of our society. Where do we stop justifying the crimes? I mean, every person who has ever committed a crime can give you a reason that someone may find justifiable. So my question is, where will we draw the line? Like we have said before, there are many people who live in poverty but do not allow that poverty to lead them to crime. There are many countries whose poverty levels far exceed South Africa's poverty, yet crime is at a lower rate than South Africa. So poverty is not and will never be an excuse for illegal behavior. Why should we be lenient with people that show no signs of wanting to live within the law? The Zamazamas are underground to mine for valuable minerals. Are they allowed to be there? No. The Zamazamas are in possession of unlicensed firearms. Are they allowed to have those? No. They are being asked to come out. Are they willing to come out? No. And what do we have in response to this? We have social justice warriors trying to make us feel pity and be kind to lawbreakers. Listen to this man because there's been mixed reaction to Minister in the Presidency Kumbu Zonjabe in his comments that illegal miners who remain underground in Stillfontein should be quote unquote smoked out. You've got to remember that in, in, in these communities, mining companies have extracted immense amount of wealth, made immense amount of profits, particularly, particularly for, for CEOs, for investors, and the communities and, and the workforce in these places like Stillfontein, have been left with dev economic and environmental devastation often and unemployment after the mines leave. So people are really desperately trying to put food on the table. That is, that, that is, really, that, that is really the root cause of, of the problem. First of all, is mining, whether legal or illegal, the only source of income for communities? This is what we mentioned in a previous video. These people come out and say things that sound like they're empowering the people while really they are disempowering them. I mean, just listening to this gentleman from this university with your brains off, one could leave believing that mining is the only source of income or wealth for individuals or communities. While in fact, there are many, many ways for individuals to make money just to get by or to become very wealthy. Yes, some organizations engaged in mining in very unethical ways and the government should make them pay. But that does not mean that the residents and citizens of South Africa should not throw their hands in the air and say, because the mining companies did ABC, that's it for me. I can never make it in life. And so I'm going to get into illegal things. No. Essentially, one cannot resolve fundamentally socioeconomic crises with, with, um, with, with the might of, of force. Someone, please, <laughs> please tell me who said we need to address the socioeconomic crisis with force. The social justice warrior is whopping issues here as can be expected from social justice warriors. They tend to take things out of context to exaggerate how people are suffering and to make it seem like the right response from the government is actually unfair. By the might of the force, he is referring to the statement made by Minister Kumbuzo and if you missed it, here is what she said. And then there was a question of whether we are going to send help underground to those Amazamas. <laughs> South Africans. <laughs> you want us to send help to criminals. You want us to send help to criminals, honestly. We are not sending help to criminals. They are, we are going to smoke them out. They will come out. 
We are not sending help to criminals. Criminals are not to be helped. Criminals are to be persecuted. We didn't send them there. And they didn't go down there for the good benefit or good intentions of the republic. So we can't help them. So tell me, where in that statement did the minister say that we need to address the socio-economic crisis with force? Nowhere. She rightly said that we are not sending help to criminals. Criminals are not to be helped. Criminals are to be prosecuted. I can already imagine that some of you are also disagreeing with this, but you need to really think about this. There are millions of unemployed people in South Africa. There are many families going to bed hungry and failing to make ends meet. If they see that Zamazamas who endanger their lives by engaging in what the law of South Africa says is illegal, got trapped and were rescued by the government on the justification that they were hungry and poor, what will stop the millions of other hungry and poor South Africans from engaging in illegal activities to resolve their hunger and poverty situation? We need to be very, very careful in how we handle the various situations that face our nation. Social justice warriors will work on your emotions, your compassion, and not on the facts at hand. Once you're charged up emotionally, they throw in their lies to convince you to accept illegal things. We saw it in America when it came to the borders. Mr. Holman, your name is on this. Is this correct? Yes, I signed that memo. So you are the author of the family separation policy? I am not the author of this memo. You're not the author, but you signed the memo. Yes, a, so, zero, a zero tolerance memo. So you provided the official recommendation to Secretary Nielsen on family, for the United States to pursue family separation. I gave Secretary Nielsen numerous recommendations on how to secure the border and save lives. But it says here that you, re you gave her numerous options, but the recommendation was option three, family but, separation. What I'm saying, this is not the only paper where we've given the Secretary numerous options to secure the border and save lives. And so the recommendation of the many that you recommended, you recommended family separation. I recommend a zero tolerance. Which includes family separation. The same as is whenever you a citizen parent gets arrested when they're with a child. Mm -hmm. You see, instead of focusing on the fact that these parents came into the country illegally, they want to focus on the emotional side of things. They are separating children from their parents. And just like that, your head is switched off and your heart is racing. Because how dare they separate poor children from their parents? But hold up, hold up just one minute. What do the facts really say? Zero tolerance was interpreted as the policy that separated children from their If family. I get arrested for DUI and I have a young child in a car, I'm going to be separated. When I was a police officer in New York and I arrested a father for domestic violence, I separated that Mr. father from Holman, with all due respect. Easy lying. If you as a legal citizen commit a crime, engage in something illegal, you will be arrested and you will be separated from your children. It's not unique. Oh, but how the social justice warriors want to make it seem like it's so unfair and racist and xenophobic. They focus on emotions and not facts. And once that happens, they open up various avenues for more crimes to be committed. For example, in the case of illegal immigrants in America, once they saw that the social justice warriors were being lenient to them when they have children, some of them started lying that children that did not belong to them were their sons and daughters, just so that they can be allowed to stay in America even though they entered illegally. Back to the social justice warrior from Vitz. Essentially, one cannot resolve fundamentally socioeconomic crises with, with, um, with, with the might of, of force. If there is a socioeconomic crisis, we don't solve it by encouraging those experiencing it to engage in crime. We solve it by creating employment. We give experience to the citizens. We start companies. We go for courses and get skills to either start our own companies or work for existing companies in order to put food on the table. We don't go and start digging when we are not allowed to do so by the law. We don't start mugging people. We don't go around with illegally acquired guns. 
Socioeconomic problems are not solved by breaking the law, dear social justice warriors. Even when the government employees like Cyril Ramaphosa and Jacob Zuma have engaged in illegal activities and robbed us of many opportunities, we don't stoop down to their level and engage in illegal activities too. What do we do? We go and vote for different parties. We make sure we do what we can to elect parties that are good at improving the socioeconomic standing of the country. Mr. Social Justice Warrior, listen to me very closely. We don't condone crimes in order to address the socioeconomic problems of the world. No, sir. You've got to remember that in, in, in these communities, Mining companies have extracted immense amount of wealth, made immense amount of profits, particularly particularly for for CEOs, for investors, and the communities and and the workforce in these places like Stillfontein have been left with dev economic and environmental devastation, often and unemployment after the mines leave. So people are really desperately trying to put food on the table. That is that that is really. That, that is really the root cause of, of the problem. And until you address that problem, the, the, I mean, there's not, the, the problem is not going to go away. Um, and, and, and in addition... <laughs> that sounds like a good argument, doesn't it? Except when you start to really look into the facts, you will realize that there is always more to the story. Through these mining companies, first of all, jobs were created for many people. Skills were taught to many people. Secondly, taxes were paid. Those taxes could have been allocated to those areas to develop housing and infrastructure, schools and training institutions that could serve the community. But those taxes paid by mining companies were not used for the benefit and development of those communities. Who's to blame for that? The government. Right now, what is the government doing with the taxes they are receiving from mining companies? Are they developing the communities? In 10, 20, 30 years from now, are we going to come back and say members of those communities should become Zamazamas because the government is failing to adequately allocate and use the taxes from the mining companies today? The government is failing and it is being allowed to because once again, our people, some of whom will be those Zamazamas and the communities where they come from, chose to vote for the same parties that misuse their taxes. Please help us inform more people to make better voting choices by subscribing to this YouTube channel, liking and sharing this video far and wide, and always remember to beware of the comrades. Moreover, these mining companies are required to rehabilitate the places where they conduct mining activities. It is law to make sure that the mining companies do this. Whose fault is it when the government enforcement agencies do not follow through? The same people that our citizens elect are the ones doing this to them. So what do you do? Do you break the law simply because the mining company did not restore the environment to its former state? Do you now become a law unto yourself? No, you vote differently. You get yourself and your children skilled. You expose yourself to people who are doing better than you so that you can learn and do what it takes to legally live a good life regardless of whether there is mining in your community or not. These mining companies are required by law to set up trusts where they contribute funds which are meant to develop the region. But time and time again, these communities barely see the fruits of those funds. Ask the members of the richest felt community who actually own the diamond-filled lands. Ask them how Alexco, a state-owned company, has let them down over and over again. Dear South Africans, the problem is not hunger. We need our people to start realizing who the enemy really is. The same government that is saying it will not lift a finger to help the Zamazamas, aka legal, illegal miners, that is a real enemy. That government was elected by those illegal miners, yet that same government is the main reason why the illegal miners and the communities where they come from are so impoverished. If only the citizens can wake up and see it. As friends, family and simply fellow citizens to the Zamazamas, we need to encourage them to make a living through other means. 
Sadly, some people have their minds set on one idea and one way of making a living. They have not yet been exposed to other, better and sometimes easier or safer ways of making an income. And as fellow citizens, let us try to show them. I mean, apart from it being illegal, it is unsafe to mine in such mines. A few years ago, there was an earthquake which damaged some of those mines. It is not safe for them, guys. And that is a big deal. <laughs> it's a daily struggle. They thread on shaky and dangerous ground. We went along with Zama Zamas, willing to risk life and limb. Eyebrow raising, their tactics maneuvering underground. <laughs> Over the past two months, 11 illegal miners went inside this mine and never resurfaced. The community of Krukastorp has reacted with shock and anger following the discovery of 21 bodies at this local mine. It is believed that the deceased were illegal miners who were moved from one location to this particular site. Yesterday, police made the grim discovery of 19 bodies, while two were found this morning. It is believed that the suspected illegal miners died after a mine shaft was flooded during heavy rains on Tuesday evening. Furthermore, since it is illegal work, the illegal miners themselves have a habit of deleting each other for the proceeds of their illegal mining. Abandoned gold mines in the northwest have become a breeding ground for organized criminal syndicates. Police in the Stelfontein mining area say rampant theft and vandalism have become a threat to national security. Well, Stelfontein residents in the northwest say they don't have confidence in police to deal with illegal mining. They claim officers are in cahoots with so-called Zamazamas. Yesterday, 21 suspected illegal miners made their first court appearance after firearm and ammunition were discovered at a mine shaft. They're now facing charges including conspiracy to commit robbery and possession of illegal firearms. Police Minister Becky Tele led a delegation to Stillfontein on Tuesday, visiting the scene where 20 suspected illegal miners were arrested on Monday. Over 24 firearms and rounds of ammunition were seized. These videos of masked men holding up assault rifles and dancing to a Basuta music genre called FAMO brings up similarities to the international terrorist group of ISIS. In fact, our Times Live investigations show that these men, known as Zamazamas or illegal miners, might just be the largest organized crime group in South Africa. So, social justice warriors, please calm down. Poverty is not a license to commit crimes. If you care as much as you claim to, why don't you use your time and efforts to help these people get the skills and the experience they need to make a decent and honest living for themselves and their loved ones? Please don't try to guilt trip us and work on our emotions to get us to accept nonsense. You can still improve people's lives while sticking to the facts. Let's do that. Anyway, that's it for today. I think we can all agree and see that at the core of many socioeconomic issues that the Zamazamas and others in this nation are experiencing is the government. We need to change the government. And for that to happen, we need to make sure that voters become smarter because ignorant citizens vote for rubbish politicians. Please help us get there. You can do that by subscribing, sharing the content and liking the videos as well as donating or joining our channel membership. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Katlero. This is Citizen Concerned. And until next time, beware of the comrades.